Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. The Indian Space Research Organization ISRO has said that the third and the final landing experiment of its reusable launch vehicle RLV LEX-03 Pushpak was successful. The landing experiment was conducted at the aeronautical test range in Chitradurga, Karnataka. The Chinook helicopter released the reusable launch vehicle Pushpak at an altitude of 4.5 km from the runway. After the aerial release, Pushpak autonomously executed cross-range correction maneuvers and approached the runway and accomplished a precise horizontal landing at the runway center line. ISRO release says the experiment has reaffirmed its expertise in acquiring the most critical technologies required for development of a reusable launch vehicle. This will cut launch costs and help advance space exploration in coming years. Pushpak used multi-sensory fusion including an inertial sensor, radar altimeter, flush air data system, pseudolytic system and navic navigation system. In Ladakh, as a tribute to the heroes of the Kargil War, the Indian Army has opened Kalubar War Memorial to tourists. This opening ceremony was part of the Forever in Operations Division's pre-Kargil Vijay Divas celebration as this year. The country will celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Kargil Divas on 26th of July. Located in the renowned Aryan Valley, this memorial commemorates the brave and sacrifices of the soldiers who fought to reclaim the valley during the war. Kalubar, a serene valley near the border, became a focal point during the Kargil War when enemy forces captured it. The area was recaptured by valiant efforts of Indian soldiers, including Captain Manoj Pandey, whose heroic actions are now immortalized at the memorial. Military College of Telecommunication Engineering MCTE, Indian Army and Society for Applied Microwave Electronics Engineering and Research Samir, an autonomous research and development laboratory under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology METI, have signed a memorandum of understanding to advance collaboration in next generation wireless technologies for Indian Army. The MOU was signed by the Commandant MCTE and Colonel Commandant Corps of Signals Lieutenant General K. H. Gavas and the Director General Samir Dr. P. H. Rao. This initiative marks a significant milestone in strengthening the Indian Army's technological capabilities which is aligned towards declared vision for the 2024 as the year of technological absorption for Indian Army by the Chief of Army Staff. Srija Akula makes history with first ever singles title at the WTT. Srija Akula made history on Sunday as the first Indian to win singles title at a World Table Tennis Contender event. Her journey featured outstanding performances, reaching the final in both women's singles and doubles. This victory not only earned her the title but also marked her as the first Indian to reach WTT Contender Singles Finals. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe has said that Sri Lanka has survived two difficult years of its economic crisis because of the financial support of 3.5 billion US dollars from India. Addressing the 31st All India Partners Meet in Colombo, he reaffirmed his commitment to strengthening ties with New Delhi, emphasizing joint efforts in sustainable energy projects. Vikramasinghe highlighted the recent discussions with the Prime Minister Narendra Modi on accelerating projects such as grid interconnection and Sampur Solar Power Project. He said that both the leaders held discussions on enhancing the land connectivity between Sri Lanka and India and expediting the Trincomalee Development Project aimed at industrial zones and tourism. Additionally, there are plans for multi-product oil pipeline from Nagapattinam to Trincomalee, he added. The island nations 
journey into economic turmoil saw its first sovereign default in April 2022 since it gained independence from British in 1948. The unprecedented financial crisis led President Vikramasinghe's predecessor Gotabaya Rajapaksha to quit office in 2022. To manage overall food security and prevent hoarding and unsurplus speculations, the center has imposed stock limit on wheat applicable to traders, wholesalers, retailers, big chain retailers and processors in all states and union territories. Addressing the media in New Delhi, Secretary of Department of Food and Public Distribution System Sanjeev Chopra said that for a traders and wholesalers, the stock limit of wheat will be 3000 metric tons. For retailers, it will be 10 metric tons and for a big chain retailer, the stock limit will be a metric ton for each outlet and 3000 metric tons at their depots. Mr. Chopra said that the stock limits on these entities will be in focus until March 31st, 2025. He further added that the government will review the stock limits based on the requirements to ensure that the prices of wheat remain stable. Kerala's Koikkoad becomes India's first UNESCO city of literature. Kerala's Koikkoad was on Sunday officially declared as India's first UNESCO city of literature. Koikkoad City Corporation played an important role in bagging the city of literature tag from UNESCO after beating cities with rich cultural history like Kolkata. State Minister M B Rajesh said In 2023, Koikkoad had earned a place in the literature category of the UNESCO Creative Cities Network. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar has said Africa will continue to be the top of India's priorities. Addressing the Africa Day celebration in New Delhi, Dr. Jay Shankar said India's partnership with Africa has gone beyond strategic concerns and economic benefits. He stated that Prime Minister Narendra Modi redefined India's engagement in Africa by outlining its 10 guided principles. These include India's commitment to liberate Africa's potential by building local capacity and creating local opportunities, keeping markets open and sharing India's experience with the digital revolution to support Africa's development. India has been at the forefront of providing capacity building and training to African candidate under the Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation Program. On the trade and economic front, India is the fourth largest trading partner for Africa with a bilateral trade of about 100 billion dollars and cumulative investments of more than 75 billion dollars. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has been freed from prison in the UK after a deal with the US authorities. It will see him plead guilty to criminal charges of conspiracy to obtain and disclose national defense information. WikiLeaks said in a post on a social media platform that Assange was granted bail by the High Court in London after spending more than 5 years in jail. He would spend no time in US custody as per the conditions finalized in tentative deals with the US Justice Department. Bolivia's army attacks presidential palace in coup attempt fails. An attempted coup in Bolivia subsided as President Luis Arc reasserted control over the military on Wednesday. Troops led by General Juan Jose Uniga stormed the presidential palace with a tank slamming its doors but withdrew after global condemnation. Ars praised the withdrawal as a victory for democracy saying many thanks to the Bolivian people. Long live democracy. India's Chandrayaan-4 parts to be sent in two sets and assembled in space. ISRO's Chandrayaan-4 will be launched in two parts and assembled in space before proceeding to the moon. ISRO chairman S Somnath announced on Wednesday This method is necessary as the spacecraft's weight exceeds ISRO's current rocket capacity. The International Space Station and similar facilities were also assembled in space. However, Chandrayaan-4 will be the first spacecraft to be assembled in this space. 
Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO handed over the medium range microwave obscurant chaff rocket MRMOCR to the Indian Navy at the ceremony held in New Delhi last week. Microwave obscurant chaff is a niche technology developed by DRDO's Defense Laboratory in Jodhpur. It obscures radar signals and creates a microwave shield around the platform and assets and reduce radar detection. Special type of fibers have been assembled in the medium range shaft rocket. The rocket forms microwave obscurant cloud in space when fired spreading over a sufficient area. The North Atlantic Council decided to appoint outgoing Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte as the next Secretary General for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO on 1st of October. On 19 June, Romanian President Klaus Lohannes officially announced his withdrawal from the race of NATO's Secretary General. Consequently, Ruth has gained the support for all the 32 member countries. Mark Rutte, whose 14 years term as Dutch Prime Minister is set to end within weeks, will be the fourth Dutchman to head the 75-year-old alliance. NATO's Secretary General is responsible for coordinating the alliance and is one of NATO's most important officials alongside the chair of NATO Military Committee and Supreme Allied Commander Europe. India has made a contribution of 1.16 million dollars to the United Nations for promotion of Hindi. R. Ravindra, the charge the FS of India's permanent mission, handed over the check to Ian Philip, the director of News and Media Division of the United Nations Department of Global Communication (DGC). India partnered with the DGC since 2018 when the Hindi at United Nations project was launched to enhance the public outreach of the United Nations in Hindi language and to spread greater awareness about global issues among millions of hindi speaking people around the world the united nations produces an audio hindi news bulletin in every week on matters relating to the world organization the global body also maintains x instagram and facebook social media accounts in hindi in addition to news website there has also been a push to add the united nations range of multilingualism but the main constraint is finance and that is why india is paying for hindi initiative india has become the world's third largest domestic aviation market after us and china according to data compiled by the aviation analytic firm official airline guide oag India is now third in the aviation market after airlines such as Indigo and Air India have expanded their fleet size to cater to the surge in the air passengers. The data shows India's domestic airline capacity doubled in last 10 years from 7.9 million seats in April 2014 to 15.5 million in April 2024. India has replaced Brazil which now stands at the fourth place with 9.7 million airline seats followed by Indonesia in fifth rank with 9.2 million seats well that's all friends for this week's updates see you soon next sunday on the same channel till then take care bye bye